Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Tom Woods Show. This is episode 2419. And today I have two guests, and as luck would have it, they're both named Kevin. So I got Kevin Dolan here, and I've got Kevin Stokes. Kevin Dolan has been a guest on the show multiple times in the past. He is the founder of Exit. Which is, um, which is a, a project he started when he himself got into a little bit of trouble, got doxxed uh, at his job, and uh, decided that he was going to help other people. Not necessarily people exclusively been doxxed, because that's not all that common, but people who are in soul-crushing jobs that they just want to figure out and exit from. And he built up a great community of people who help each other out, help each other to achieve what they want to achieve for themselves, for their families, for, for a sense of fulfillment in their lives. Instead of being stuck in that soul-crushing corporate job they took when they were 25 because they had a young family and they didn't know what else to do. Would you say that's a good summary, Kevin? That's about right. Okay. And by the way, I'm going to be calling him Dolan. I'm going to call the other one Stokes for this episode because they're, they have the same first name. Uh, so I brought, uh, I brought uh, Dolan on to my school of life program because I said, I like what you're doing in exit and I want to do that for my people. I want them to have groups like this, uh, not only for people who want to get out of a terrible job, but who maybe want to start a business or uh, lose 50 pounds or what, whatever their uh, short-term goal is, we want to help them achieve it. Then we have Kevin Stokes, um, who is uh, a, an entrepreneur. He's in the past couple of years started two businesses, both of which have been quite successful. And um, I just want to talk about the situation we find ourselves in. So first of all, gentlemen, Kevins, welcome to the show. Thanks, Tom. Um, to be here. All right. So, so here's the situation that we're all in. And the thing is, I think we've all grown weirdly accustomed to it, to the point where we almost don't notice it anymore. It almost seems normal that we live in a society where the people who, who run all the major institutions can't stand us. We would consider it almost weird now to live in a society where one major, or a handful of major institutions were actively cheering us on or, or uh, advocating our principles. It, it, it just seems, it's unthinkable. And so we've kind of adjusted our lives accordingly that we can't expect any help from anybody and that, and that to the contrary, if you ever thought that people in charge of the regime just are just there to try to bring about the common good, well, think again. It seems like everywhere you turn, there's some obstacle being put in your path. So they want to make energy more expensive. All prices are getting more expensive. They're making food uh, more expensive. It's harder to get your kids educated because they're going to have their minds colonized by crazy people. So you have that problem. Then some of the states have gotten got wildly crazy during COVID. So now you got to figure out where's a sensible place I can live and stay under the radar. I mean, the problems we face are just legion. And then on top of that, it's not just the public sector. I mean, there are a lot of really bad private sector actors too. And there are a lot of jobs I wouldn't want to have and a lot of employers I wouldn't want to work for. But it seems like an insuperable obstacle. How do I start a new thing? What am I going to go start my own business? Forget that. And, and there's, a, there's a certain, I would say, cultural expectation that you're supposed to finish high school, go to college for four years, then wait by the phone until you get hired. And when you get a job, and you say on, on Facebook, I got a job, you get a thousand likes. But if you type instead, I just started my own business, you get two likes because that's not the cultural expectation. But for our people, I want to kind of, I want to do a prison break here because we all suffer this way. You know, we all, sometimes we feel like prisoners in our own homes. And the, the way some people respond to this is either just to give up or to be defeatist or to say, I'm going to sit back until it all collapses. Oh, well, have fun with that because when it quote unquote collapses, people are not going to be looking around for where are the libertarians so they can lead me out of this. So don't, don't look forward to that. Uh, or it's just, um, I, I think some people respond by um, just complaining, just writing articles about it. And I came to the conclusion that I just can't do that. I cannot just do that. So my goal is to try to bring together like-minded people who are serious, who are ambitious, who intend to live a fulfilling life for themselves and their kids, even 
when surrounded by enemies, I know there are people like that out there who don't just want to complain, who actually want to roll up their sleeves and do something for all of us and for themselves uh, as, as families. So hence, TomSchoolOfLife.com, my website where we do exactly that. And that's where Kevin uh, Dolan works as my director for, um, for our small group portion of the, of the program. So uh, Kevin Stokes now, I want to turn to you and, and um, actually, you know what, Dolan, you started Exit, so you've been thinking about these things longer than I have. Um, do you, first of all, do you have anything to say about that crazy rant I started the episode with? Well, yeah, I mean, you, you, there's two problems that are, that are at work here. And one of them is that like some of us are being sort of uh, forcibly expelled from that system, right? And uh, you're right that that's not, all that common at this point. Although I will say when I started the group in 2021, that was the crest of the, the vax mandate wave. And so a lot of people who thought that they would be left alone turned out not to have been left alone. It wasn't something where you could just sort of keep your head down and click through the diversity training and like nod along and just sort <laughs> of go about your, your job. You, uh, you, you had to actually affirmatively take a, uh, a procedure, um, to, uh, to keep your job. And so we had a lot of people come in on that basis. But, but the other part of this that's happening is that not only is, is the sort of, well, the index card of allowable opinion, right? That, that's getting smaller and smaller, right? The, the, the size of uh, your soul, how, how, how small you have to make yourself uh, is getting smaller and smaller. But also that, that system inside is falling apart. Um, the, 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 trust that you can have in your doctor, the trust that you can have in the way your kids are being educated, uh, the, the, the sort of long-term prospects of the economy in general are just not really great. And so exit is partly about, you know, how do we renegotiate our relationship to these employers so that we can have a little bit more sovereignty? But also it's like, how do we create something on the outside so that when, like, like you were saying, sort of when it all goes down, when it collapses or as it gets worse, uh, we don't have to like figure out what we're going to do on the fly when that happens. We have sort of our, uh, our uh, escape pod built. And so, uh, yeah, I think, I think what we're doing here at, at the school is, is tremendously important. It's, it's, it's getting the right people together. It's getting them acquainted with the right skill sets. I mean, basically, it's about you have to get the right people together, the people who care about this so that they can build what's next. And I just, I'm, I'm in this because for years and years, the, the two things I most got asked were, number one, are there any books that my kids age like six to 15 can read? And my answer was always no. I don't know no. of any. Sorry. <laughs> then as now some have come along, but that was, that was one of the most common. Then the other most common question was, all right, look, I've, I've, I've heard all your lectures and I've read all the books and I, I completely agree with you, but now what am I supposed to do? And I, I mean, it was embarrassing. I had no answer. I, I don't know. Um, maybe let's wait a, a, around for somebody else who read my books to come up with a good idea because I genuinely had no idea. And then I came up with this thing and it seems to be kind of working out. So Stokes, let's bring you into this conversation. So over the past couple of years, you've started two businesses. Let's talk about one of them, the more recent of them. Uh, it is a, a, a meat and food co-op. I'm, I'm, on that Facebook page. And every single yep. time I see one of your posts, I click like, because in a very marginal way, every like helps that post in the algorithm so that more people see it. And I want to support all my people in, in ways large and small. And that's one of the smaller ways. So I've done that. But uh, talk to us about this transformation that, that you've had in, in your life. Well, first off, Tom, I, I want to just say thanks because um, your participation in the group might be hidden to most of the members that we have there because they're not particularly tied to our way of looking at the world. Some of them are maybe, but uh, I suspect that most are not because it's got a pretty wide audience. But every time I see your name pop up when I'm into Facebook, which I never do until now, um, I'm kind of tickled a little bit inside to, to see your name there. So that's appreciated because you're right. It does help. One of the things that we've sort of 
done is is model our participation in the Facebook group and after the School of Life and how that operates in the forum and just sort of having access between our customers and my wife, Susan, and I has really sort of grown it up. And for those people that don't know, which is pretty much everybody, uh, we're a local shopping, group shopping uh, co-op. We started it as a means to find access to more food that we prefer to buy because everything was getting pretty expensive at the supermarket. And there had been some attempts locally to sort of bring local farmers, organic materials, organic foods to local consumers. And we found that although we really wanted to support those groups, they were kind of out of our budget range. So my wife, as tenacious as she has, started looking for uh, other options and doing research. And she found a group in Utah, which is only about a five-hour drive away, doing exactly what she was looking for. They were a group by large, large organization where people just order on line the different items of food and then they would go to a warehouse the cassie the founder would go to a warehouse load up her refrigerated truck that she bought and then go to a couple of parking lots and drop the food off so she started that in 2020 right at the height of the covid hysteria out of a need for barren shelves and so we hit it off very well with her and her husband and we decided that, yeah, we would try to start something here and wanted to model it after them. And they said, let's just partner up. And so now we're a conglomeration of both Utah and Idaho. And there is a small group that's in Wyoming as well. And this last Saturday, just a couple of days ago, we did our last pickup for 2023. And we were able to deliver two semi-trucks worth of fresh chicken, beef, and other frozen items to about 300 orders or about 300 people that had ordered over the last uh, six and a half weeks that we'd had the sale open. And that has been probably uh, the most rewarding kind of experience I've had because it opened my eyes to what it's possible to do as someone that's just on the side. We had no intention of ever being in the food business. I knew nothing about it. My wife knew nothing about it. We just knew that we liked to have access to better products at a, at a affordable prices. And it's been uh, nothing short of a miracle for us because we have an extremely small group of people. We have like 2,000 people on our email list and about the same in our Facebook group. There's about a couple hundred that are different from each list. And between them, we've managed to pull in a lot of sales. And we're, we're hitting a nerve, I think, because we're sitting right between that artisanal organic farmers that we want to support, but most people can't afford, and we're below the grocery stores. So we're able to kind of short circuit the system, and we don't have any uh, infrastructure that we have to support here locally. There is a warehouse that we own or that the co-op owns in Utah, but beyond that, we're not a big corporation, and it's just people getting together and making things work for each other. Uh, Stokes, let me, this is, you probably haven't been called Stokes since your high school days, but <laughs> Let me ask you about uh, the your first day because there's a lot of discouraging stuff on the Tom Woods show. You know, much as I try to brighten it, you know, with my charming personality, still it's very, very grim material a lot of the time. But this is not grim because I I want you to talk about the first day you opened, or maybe even the first hour, and what yeah. was this like? Now, of course, Good. you had led up to it with some preparation work, but but we'll talk about that first day. Yeah. So. Um... Yeah, that was kind of a, a earth shattering for me. Uh, my wife and I had set some expectations. We wanted to do the best we could to excel at the what we were doing. And we had no experience really marketing outside of a small side business that she had with photography. And so we hadn't talked to a large number of people. We just started contacting some of our friends, encouraging them to join. And we started to build this small, moderate list. The expectations out of Utah was that we would maybe perhaps sell about ten thousand to maybe fifteen thousand dollars in food items for our first sale over the next four weeks from when we started. And we had just took your email domination program and just followed the checklist and just did exactly what you said. We started contacting people, we pushed them into the Facebook group, we started working it hard at getting interaction with people, trying to just not just create customers, but try to create a community. We started 
as part of it, something that completely outside of us is a sort of, we call it the egg network. It's not a big deal in Idaho, but in Utah, apparently it's illegal to sell eggs without a permit. And so they started a program there to get people together, buyers and sellers. So we just did the same thing. It was very small, but it got people excited. We started getting some movement and we expected when we opened the doors at 9 a.m. on that Tuesday, we thought maybe we'd be, we'd be happy if we got $1,000 in the first day. <laughs> Within about 30 minutes, we had crossed $6,000. And by the afternoon, I think we'd been open about four hours, we had crossed 25000 and, and you within, were emailing me, telling me about this during yeah. the day. Yeah, it was, it was quite shocking to us because um, it was the first time that I had found or had broke through my own mental barrier of understanding that the effort you put in in advance and just follow what other people are doing or tell you to do that have been there before, that you could uh, establish something that's of value to other people. And that's all we wanted to do. But we had shattered by that afternoon what our, we had set as our six-month goal. And so it was, really, it was really weird for us as a couple because we were trying to talk to each other about, okay, where do we go from here? We've already blown past what we had wanted to do six months from now. And so we had to really start scrambling to figure out how to wrap our brains around that kind of success because it was wildly more successful than we had anticipated. To the point that by the time that first sale closed, we had trouble getting enough transportation to haul all the product up here. And we had to sell, we had to close the sale 10 or 12 days earlier than had previously been planned. And then we, we had subsequent sales after that. And of course, that first sale had a lot of buzz. It dropped down. But over the next couple of sales, we found that our connection to the people that we're bringing this food to is absolutely, it's beyond, it's as, it's as meaningful to me as it is being a part of the school of life because the connections that we're getting with people, we have a constant inflow of people thanking us. We had people just yesterday drop some of their items back off at the house and said, we bought these and wanted to give them back to you as a gift because we absolutely love what you've done for our family. And those sorts of things are... Um, those are powerful and they're meaningful. And I think it, it shows that if you, you know, you, you hit the right nerve with people that you can do a great deal more for others than you would ever imagine. Uh, it's I, a great story. Can I say something? Yeah, please do, uh, Dolan. Go ahead. I just, I think that there's, we're in the face of, of all these technological headwinds um, that, that separate us from each other and make us, uh, less connected uh and and it's harder for us to feel sort of human um and i think the future what people crave and what we need to provide is these human scaled businesses human scaled opportunities that lean into the technology i mean like your business model my business model uh would not have been possible 15 years ago right? There's, there's, there's yeah. technology that makes this possible. And we've sort of found a way to make that work for us instead of uh, being slaves to it. And that's incredibly powerful. I do want to point out before we move on, that uh, Stokes here mentioned something called the email domination program. That's actually a training program that I created that teaches you how to build and monetize an email list. And if you're going to do anything online, you have to know how to do that. And uh, I just want to point out that anybody who is already a member of TomSchoolOfLife.com, uh, you have access to that, but you may not know it. It's on the bonuses page, which nobody clicks on. Click on that bonuses page on the site, and uh, and you'll see it there. Now, Stokes, I feel weird calling you that. That's so stupid. <laughs> but, but, you know, you said something. You made a fleeting remark in there that I want to tease out a little bit. Um, there is very much a mindset shift that has to take place when you embark on a project like this. And I myself had that mindset shift years and years ago, but I had it. I, and again, not, not everybody has to follow in Kevin Stokes's footsteps. Not everybody has to have his own business. You can, there's still a lot of value in uh, learning how to get better at your current job and stand out better and get a promotion. 
There's plenty of ways you can be helped, even if you have traditional employment. But I know a lot of people want to go out on their own. They want, they, they dream of a kind of freedom that they can have in that way. And there is a mentality shift that has to take place. And I used to make fun of these mindset courses because I thought, oh, get your money, just, just turn, turn a switch in your brain. You don't need to buy a mindset course. But at least now I do kind of see it that I think most of us by default, unless we're very, very unusual, we think of ourselves as consumers, that other people make things and we consume them. Other people provide services and we consume them. Other people boldly try new things and then we see if we like them. But what there's, a, there's an extraordinary thing that happens when suddenly you say to yourself, wait a minute, I can be one of those people. I, I've, I'm, I belong to the same species that those people do. You know, I can do this. I, could, I don't have to just sit and do what somebody, uh, some boss tells me to do and then that's, that's how I make my living. I can do something that no one told me to do. I can try something out that nobody told me to do. And to me, that's the most exciting thing about what I do, that every morning that alarm goes off, I think, you know, I'm, I'm going to continue working on such and such project because I'm convinced it's going to work, but I've got this other idea for a project. And I know how sappy this sounds. I know how sappy it sounds, but I've been reading Zig Ziglar lately and he calls his alarm clock, I, I, I know, I already know, he calls it his opportunity clock. And you know, I know that's sappy. I know it's sappy. But I hate the sound my alarm clock makes. But when I think of it as my opportunity clock, I can kind of endure it a little bit better. But, but uh, Kevin, I'm getting a little bit um, uh, afield here. Do, do, you think, do you think there's something to what I'm saying about, the, about that mindset shift and that it's got to happen? And that when it does happen, um, it's it's incredible what can follow. I, I absolutely, I, I Tom, I, I I'm getting chills as I think about it now because for me, I joined the School of Life because my payment to the supporting listers had lapsed and I'd somehow missed it, and it just to- coincided with when you launched this program. So I joined as a way to give you cash, and thought nothing of it. And for the first six months, didn't even participate in any of the things that were going on in the platform or any of the community activities that were going on. I missed the first in-person event, started the business accountability groups, and I just went because there was one that fit close to my time slot that I could meet. Now, my wife and I have some small businesses on the side, but we weren't thinking of them any differently than a person would a job or a second job or another sideline of income. You know, the things that people call like your side gig or whatever. And I had no expectation whatsoever that things would change quite this way. For me, the accountability groups that was seeing other people have success and I was like fascinated with what they were doing. And I knew it was difficult for me to kind of articulate to people about real estate notes because all they were for me was a replacement for when I was a um, landlord and I had some rentals and I decided I wanted to get out of that business. And we didn't have a giant pile of assets. We just had a couple and we got rid of them because they were too much work for us to have with a small family. I was doing notes. I was treating them just like a second job that I didn't pay any attention to. I had no interest in really turning it into a business. I hear some of the things that people are doing. My wife and I start talking about this food and meat co-op. And we started sort of exploring what that looks like. And the entire time, all I thought about was that this might be another part-time gig. This might be a small, you know, maybe $1,000 every six months or something like that. But something happened along the way. You hear the success stories of the people around you. And as you're talking to them in the accountability groups and on the forums, when I'm talking to other people that are involved in the School of Life, you start making connections with people. And it's like you speak things into an existence. They weren't there before. And the moment you say them, you're like, well, okay, that seems like that's something I should actually do or something that someone else says. And for me, that was sort of the icebreaker. The success when the food and meat co-op was the first time that I really was shocked into understanding that I could change my life forever for myself, my wife, our children. We could set something and uh, set a different course that we wanted, that we had control over because us, to be honest, I was totally fine in my job. I was completely comfortable. I'm still completely comfortable with that line of work, but tasting freedom of a different sort that you can control is intoxicating in a way. It becomes almost addicting. 
And it's not the only thing that we've done since then. We've decided to launch a couple of other activities. I'm exploring purchasing another side business. My wife is launching a new online platform for a completely unrelated business just later on this week. And I, it is like this nonstop cascade of success building on success. And it's, it's not just us doing it. It's the interaction with other people around us because I know it's contagious because I got here because I've listened to other people make success in their lives. And I, I can't possibly, I can't possibly imagine going back. And even though I still have my corporate gig, I, it's, it's becoming an anchor of, or a drag and it shouldn't, it's a great job, but it's not what I want. It's not what I want for other people around me. And I think the more success you have, the more that builds on itself. And I think that you two are a great example of seeing that come to fruition for other people. Hey, everybody, let's take a minute to thank our sponsor, Persist SEO. If you are getting buried by your competition online, then build your brand, your reputation, and your lead flow with digital marketing by Persist SEO. If you are a small local business trying to compete against large companies in the service industry, then increase your visibility with Persist SEO. Or what if you have low or no leads coming in on a consistent basis? Well, then website search engine and conversion optimization can help move the needle to a more prosperous business model for you. Are you tired of cold calling and networking, meeting places getting shut down? Use your website as a lead generation engine. Or what if you're not showing up for your services in the search engines? Well, get found with Persist SEO's expert search engine optimization. All you have to do is call 770-580-3736 or visit them at ineedseo.help for a free website audit and consultation. That's 770-580-3736 or ineedseo.help. It's great uh, to be Dolan, making you look like you want to You look like you want to jump in, so go ahead. Oh, sorry. I, I, I was just going to say, I, it's great to be making those kinds of calls. Like, like uh, you know, this job is fine. It totally pays my bills. It's, it's totally acceptable for me to do it. But I got just things that are more interesting to me that could also do it. And, and, and there was a, a podcast I was listening to recently where the guy was talking about, like, if you were going to an a entrepreneurship convention, but it was all about lottery tickets. Like, how do we win the lottery? And there's like one way you go about that. You could argue about like, well, I think odd numbers are really the way to go to win the lottery. Or like, I think you should, uh, you know, use Fibonacci sequences and that's how you do it. But the, but the way, like if, if you wanted to uh, win the lottery, you want to talk about how to do that. The answer would be get a lot of tickets, get a lot of tickets. And what I hear you doing is like, you tried some things that kind of sort of worked and were fine and was, was, you know, paying the bills, but you kept on taking these shots on goal until you found something that was like really meaningful. And then what happens is you get obsessive <laughs> and you get, you get drunk on it and you, and you, and that's when you get like, people are smarter than they act in these corporate jobs. Um, I was a finance guy for a defense contractor and people uh, correctly inferred that I was like stupid on the basis of my performance, that job, I was terrible at it. Um, to some extent that was like, you know, just a different kind of job, but I also didn't give it, I, I didn't care. I didn't care about that job. And, uh, you know, people don't talk about me like I'm stupid anymore because I care about this job and I bring my mind to it. And, and I think that, uh, to just finding something that you really believe in and that you need to succeed. It's like, it's like 30 IQ points, 40 IQ points. It's crazy what it can do. You guys may know the guy I'm, I'm thinking of. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say his name. He probably won't care. But we have somebody um, in the community who is a filmmaker and, a, and an accomplished one. And he has built up a, a kind of a, a reliable formula for making made-for-TV movies for networks that I guarantee everybody listening to us today has heard of. And it's just, uh, you know, rinse and repeat. He knows the talent pool that they draw the actors from. Uh, he knows uh, how to get the screenplays. He knows how to find a good location. He knows how, he knows it all. He knows it all. He knows how to negotiate uh, pay for all the actors. He knows everything. 
And and so he just what he does is he raises some capital, spends it on the on the film, and then generates the revenue and then pays the investors back. And in general, he's he's paying back within one to three years, anywhere from 40% to if it's a real runaway hit, three times, three times the investment. So I'm an investor in one of his films. Now, this is not investment advice, people. I am simply telling you what I do. I would rather do that because again, this guy, he knows this, this just work. He can do it in his sleep. You do it this way. People go for this kind of movie over and over and over and over again. And so that puts money on his, uh, on his, you know, food on his table. Uh, and it's an opportunity. I would, how would I have known that that was a, a, a good thing to invest in? I never would have had the opportunity. I'm thrilled to have that opportunity. I'd much rather do that than a lot of the other things I could be doing with my money. But what's interesting is that what he really wants is to connect with other people who have this, the skills, the knowledge base, the talents in entertainment so that instead of just doing these things, which he can do and be comfortable the rest of his life, he can do things that are more, projects that are more meaningful for him that might, you know, maybe have a little bit more of a philosophical bent to them without being, you know, sledgehammer about it. And he thinks this is the kind of community where I can start to build something like that. So it's both, uh, I, have a, I have a great independent lifestyle funded by something that I'm really good at to, I want to have a great independent lifestyle funded by something I'm really good at and that gives my life meaning. I mean, imagine having all of that. That's what we're shooting for. He, he also, there's a, there's a nature to a lot of, a lot of, there's actually a lot of groups that are trying to do more or less what we're trying to do, trying to get uh, people on our side of the ideological fence, whatever, coordinating and, and working together. And a lot of them are like, job boards or, you know, investment cooperative, something like that. What I think they're missing is that what it takes to partner with somebody on this human level, what it takes to like, like throw in all your chips together and like, you know, get, get on the pirate ship and go, and go to sea with these people is it takes trust. It takes, uh, familiarity with people and, uh, you know, uh, this this filmmaker that we're talking about, he's a member of my group as well, and he spent eighteen months getting to know the guys and and getting people familiar with his pitch and assessing his reliability, assessing like is he the real deal? Does he know what he's talking about? And it's that kind of you have to be in an environment where you are constantly. Uh, running up against other people and hearing their stories and getting to know them. And uh, it's, it's kind of like the way you made friends in high school. You know, you had, you had study hall, you had nowhere else to be, and you were, you were sort of forced to get to know each other. And I think, uh, you know, we can't force anybody to get to know each other, but we can create lots of opportunities for that kind of creative ferment to happen. And that's, uh, that's what I think is the magic of these calls. Well, you know, if, for me, Kevin, just to build on that, I think... Um, there's something special beyond just that with this group. I, I can't put my finger on it. I don't know what it is because I didn't notice it right away and I didn't understand it for a very long period of time. But I remember coming back from the in-person event in January after meeting people that were just people on the screen and then meeting new people that I saw in the forums or in the chats, but I'd never really interacted with. And we got to meet in person and get to exchange and sort of um, get to know each other. And I realized, and I told my wife this when we were leaving, when we come home, that this is, this is the kind of people that I wish were my neighbors. I mean, I live in a neighborhood that's, um, it's suburban. I, I have two guys that I served in the guard with that I can see their houses from mine. And I would rather have people that are from the school of life in my neighborhood. There's nothing against those guys. I love them dearly. They are like brothers to me, but they're not the same type of mentality. They don't hold the same sort of goodwill that you feel coming off of the people that you interact with in the community. And everybody stands up for each other in ways that you can't possibly imagine. I just put out a call to a couple of the facilitators in the last 10 days to talk about this business that I'm looking at buying. I'm under NDA right now while we negotiate it because I can't uh, say what it is, but it's in a small form manufacturing type business that can be run in a fairly small facility. And I have no idea about that industry. 
I tried talking to an engineer that was local to see if they could help me find some information. I could not find anything. But yet, Brian O'Leary and Jeremy, both Jeremy Evans, they both step up and they pass back information. And within a couple of days, I'm talking to another member I've never met before who happens to be in the exact same industry, just a little bit different niche and validated 90% of what I was trying to do. And the only thing they wanted back in payment was to pay it forward. You would never in a million years be able to buy this kind of goodwill and sharing of expertise in any other platform I've ever been a part of. And it's astounding to me that not more people understand that. Well, yeah, let me, let me jump in here. Um, uh, you know, we, we do things, it's true. We do, there's a lot more to what we do than just uh, business. Like for instance, uh, You know, we have twice a month, we bring somebody in for the whole group, not just a small group, but for the entire membership to learn from. And so I I have a commitment from uh, Miriam Grossman, who's a child psychiatrist, who was going to come on and talk about gender theory and how to inoculate your kids against it and, and take people's, take your questions for an hour, you know, like stuff like that, but how to really survive this crazy world. Um, but a lot of people are necessarily, are, are, however, interested in the business piece of it. And it's true, you can find a lot of entrepreneur groups out there that you could join. The problem is, for, from my standpoint, is that I don't want to have to censor myself. And I find a lot of times in just ordinary, the course of life, you're, you, know, you, you, you don't say certain things or you, you, know, you hold back because you don't want to start a fight with a stranger. I mean, I, I would never get anything done if I went out loudly proclaiming my opinions in every possible situation. So I don't, and it's not because I'm afraid to, it's that I, I don't want to be bothered. I, you know, I, I don't want to argue with somebody who's unreachable. I have things to do, namely reaching people who are reachable. So likewise, I don't want to be in one of these entrepreneur groups and say, well, I'm working really hard so that my wife can stay home with the kids. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I don't want the, the judgment that's going to come, up, come down on me from that. I want to be in a group where I could just talk. I could just be myself, not feel like I have to hold anything back because I'm afraid that everybody in this room probably, you know, is on board with whatever the current thing is. I don't have to worry about that in this thing, you know, because these are all normal people, sane people who think the way I do. And, and you know, yeah, we'll, we'll have some disagreements, but we're always respectful toward each other, which is a feature that is rather missing from our general society, let's say. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's, it's not only that you, like, don't want to have a fight. It's like, Again, partnerships are, uh, well, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be an entrepreneurial partnership, but just like making friends, just connecting with other people, there's actually like a lot of friction involved there. And if you can jump into a room where you like know you've got some common ground out of the way, it just moves so much faster. And if you're, try- and if you're sort of uh, taking a lot of shots on goal, reaching out to a lot of different people, then that little bit of friction, that adds up and it makes it really difficult. And I mean, I've talked to people who participate in these sort of entrepreneurship for the sake of entrepreneurship type groups. And it's, it's mercenary. It's very much like, and, and that means like you don't really know if you can trust people just in terms of their values. Yeah. Like there's, there's uh, you know, not to say that you should just like run off and join the circus with anybody in the group, but like there's, there's, it's way quicker. It's just way quicker to get to, I know what this guy's about or this gal. Perfect example for us is that down the road, 30 miles away, or a couple that had it not been that they were in school of life, we would have never met them. And their kids and our kids are all good friends. We're, we don't go to the same churches. We don't have the same social circles except school of life. And now we see each other at least once a month. And our kids are absolutely the best friends on earth. Like it's absolutely astounding what, what can happen if you put your time in. Well, that is, that's all excellent to hear. Do you guys have any parting words as we wrap up for today? Let's start with Dolan. Yeah, I would just say this, this group has the critical mass, uh, like Kevin Stokes was saying, you know, he was able to find pretty much exactly what he was looking for. And if you, if you're in the group and you want to reach out to your facilitators and figure out like you have, you have a very like narrow niche skill set that you're looking for, take a whack at it. I bet we've got them. I bet we've got them. It's a big group. And, and, uh, it's, you will not get to see 
the whole scope of the group uh, in, in one call because there's maybe 10 people on a call, but there's thousands, you know, in the, in the broader network. So uh, basically, user facilitators and, and really, it's an incredibly cool group of people. And the, the goodwill, I, I mean, Kevin's absolutely right. Uh, it's, it's very rare to see that kind of willingness to help each other from a group this size. Kevin uh, Stokes, as we wrap up, um, w w anything you want to say, make sure you add, it's a long domain name, but add the website for your food and meat uh, co-op. Uh, sure. So it's foodandmeatcoop.com is the main website out of Utah. We're working on a project with them to make just one domain. But in the meantime, um, if you add in SW as in Southwest Idaho, to the end of the food and meat. So food and meat coop in southwestidaho.com. And of course, if that's too long to remember, by the time this um, episode airs, we have two new websites that'll be up at kevin-stokes.com and uh, my wife's new business, thehappyhomesteader.com. Of course, there's a coupon code, but you'll never know what it is. Regular <laughs> listeners might. And uh, we're gonna we're planning on offering when we launch that. Uh, hopefully, it'll be open on um, either Friday or Saturday of this week, and we're gonna be launching with a uh, coupon code Woods for ten percent off. That is great. That is great. Well, thanks, man. And I'll I'll put all these links in the video description and show notes page will be tomwoods.com dot com slash twenty four nineteen. So well, I did this episode. You know, I I'm I, I'm always unsure about things like this. And Kevin Dolan said to me, look. You know, you have at least some people in your audience who would like to know what you're up to. And you're like, well, what are you working on? This is what I'm working on. So, I want you, I'd like I'd like it very much if you checked it out. It's the Tom Woods School of Life, and the website is tomschooloflife.com. Go check that baby out. Thank you to the Kevins, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit TomWoods.com to subscribe to the show for free, and we'll see you next time. Like the sound of The Tom Woods Show? My audio production is provided by Podsworth Media. Check them out at Podsworth.com.